Hello everyone, welcome for this new Embers Adrift weekly community show, the first one of 2023. So first of all, a very happy new year from Stormhaven Studio and from myself to all of you that are watching this video. May your year be successful, flourishing, plenty of blessing of all kinds and a lot of love to all of you and your families. So may everything happen very well for you. We had gone through some hard time with those last couple of years. So now we deserve some good time. So let's hope it's successful for everyone. All right, when it comes to Embers Drift, this is very exciting as well as we have concluded 2022 by the release of the game and the first months after release and now we are starting 2023 and um, much good things are coming up for us and for you this year so very excited to speak to you about that today so what is the program today we are going to speak about the patch notes yes we have a patch today with new content so that's very exciting what's going to happen we are going to discover that in a moment then of course i'm going to show you the content creator of the week and after i have a special guest drindin and there it is finally a patch you have been waiting for it so the last two weeks it was the holidays so the dev team have taken some time off some family time but they still been working on some stuff so we didn't had any patch during the christmas week no the new year's uh, eve week but now we are back it's the 3rd of january and we have a patch for you so let's read that up Welcome to 2023. Everyone on the team is slowly getting back into the groove of things and we can wait to continue pumping out content. This week's bring a number of updates to DOTS debuff, application, resist adjustment, abilities improvement, combat log improvement, camera collision fixes, and a new high level outdoor dungeon for you to explore. We expect a number of new quests to come online in the coming weeks along with improvement to active defenses and maybe a few new creatures. Isn't that exciting guys? But this week we have a new dungeon for you guys. An open world dungeon, so it's not underground, it's above ground and it's going to be awesome. So if you want to read all of the details of those patch notes, I suggest you to read the patch note yourself or to wait for Alice Blue video. She will read the entirety of the patch note. As for me, I'm just going to select a few things to read for you to know. So I think what's really important is to note that the fixes, the dots and debuff that are partially resisted now correctly reduce their duration. Fixed a nav mesh issue inside Retro Ridge Rock, causing mobs to spawn inside of it. Oh, thanks to Nopek, we have been exploring that problem. <laughs> So scene loading tech rework rewritten to accommodate upcoming change. See patch size in the work in progress section below for more details. All right, but now something that is very important that you will want to know is this one, the ability adjustment from the shadow should now always crit. Provoke range increase from 8 meter to 10 meter. Serration can no longer stack multiple times on the same character. So that means two duelists cannot buff twice your DPS. Steam updated to give stamina to the target directly. Disengage increased threat reduction amount at higher level. Hemorrhaging strike chance to proc first stages of damage increased. Stifle haste reduction increased. An energizing battle chance updated to give an extra stamina tick on tears that were stopping at 20 seconds. Note that the buff will now last 30 seconds at those level range. Resist adjustments 
This patch brings improvement to how resist work for lasting effect, dots and debuff. Much of the feedback we have gotten thus far is that resist are a worthless stat because it's not really felt. When resisting an effect, the duration is reduced based on your resist values. However, shaving 2 seconds off of a 10 second days probably is not even something players notice. One of the design reasons for only reducing the duration is that we felt that if a player's ability was resisted, they would feel as though their stamina was wasted. But we are also depriving players of the rewarding feeling of straight up resisting an incoming effect. We are adding a full resist dice roll to combat calculation, hoping that it will inject a bit more life into those stats. It will also allow us to do some more interesting things with them in the future. To avoid any drastic changes to the core combat loop, having to rebalance plus resist value or obsoleting gear, we are simply setting the chance of fully resisting an effect application to 20% of your resist value. For example, a character with plus 40 days resist will have an 8% chance to fully resist the days application. If the effect is not fully resisted, the duration will still be reduced by 40% as it is now. Note that this additional check will be in place for players applying effect to NPCs as well. So now NPC have a chance to resist your effect as well. Update to combat text. That's also something that has been requested many times. To improve the visibility of resist and other events, we have made some improvement to the combat log. This will be an ongoing iterative process with the goal of delivering more data while maintaining readability and brevity. Other combat text is now 20% smaller to help differentiate it from your own. Update the rounding of combat log display value. Previously, all values were rounded down regardless of the decimal values. Values will now be rounded down if the decimal value is less than 0.5 and rounded up if they are greater than or equal to 0.5. Additional information has been added to the parentheses after combat text. Those abbreviations also now have tooltip in which you can hover for a reminder. So ADV, the attack has an advantage. This, the attack has a disadvantage. EDV stroke, the attack had an advantage that was cancelled by a disadvantage. Res, the application was resisted. Press, the application was partially resisted. Dim, the application was impacted by diminishing, diminishing returns. ABS, the value absorbed by armor. Threat, the threat value. OT, the value done by overtime effect. Dot or hots. So, hopefully, you will enjoy this change to the combat log. I personally don't pay so much attention to the combat log, so I will probably not even notice most of it. But it will be interesting. And um, give us your feedback related to those changes. Do you enjoy it? Do you like it? What else would, do you wish will be improved? All right, let's see now the exciting part, which is Red Shore Reach Exile Freehold. A new outdoor dungeon is now available in Redshore called the Exile Freehold. This higher level zone shares the same server executable as Redshore Ridge, but is not physically connected to it in any way. So there it is. Look at this. I have more screenshots for you guys. This is really cool. So this is a new outdoor dungeon for high level uh, players. And um, it's going to be very interesting. And I hope that you guys are going to enjoy that. Some more of the screenshots. Look at that. That's a sneak peek for you guys of the new dungeon. Isn't that cool? 
just for you exclusive All right, it's finished. That's it. I think so, Stinkhorn. I've seen, I have visited it to take those screenshots and I do believe that, well, there's plenty of crafting materials. At least I've recognized some of them. All right, work in progress. As you know, you can find the work in progress on this thread. This is our roadmap. The roadmap is often asked by some of you. So if any of you or your friend or your guildies want to know the roadmap, this is the thread we're speaking about. We have been speaking about it many times. So I'm not going to reread it this uh, show. But you know where it is, you can check it out. That explains everything we are working on and everything that will be worked on next. Work in progress. This is the detailed version that, uh, that happened in every patch note. Active defense revamped. This will take one to three weeks. Current active defense, avoid block, and parry are all functionally the same. This poses a few design issues as players could potentially stack those values to completely mitigate incoming damage while not providing any interesting decision along the way. We have always wanted to swim back around to update those, but things got lost in the shuffle at launch. To rectify this, we have started modifying the design of how active defenses differ from one another and what what benefits they could provide to the player. The current thought process is as follow. Avoid, remain relatively unchanged, this stat will be found mostly on low AC gear and or jewelry, very well may add threat reduction on a successful avoid. Block will move from its current state to a mitigation percent dependent on your shield and or two-hander weapon. Given that the initial design intent of this stat was to be more tank focused, we wanted to add some option here that hopefully makes things a little bit more interesting. Our current thought is to add a block rating range to 200 weapon and shield. Upon successful blocking an incoming attack, a dice will be rolled based on the values of your weapon shield to determine how much damage you essentially resist, not absorb. Having a range on the item will allow us to provide an additional layer of progression. For example, maybe a low level shield has a 15-30% block rating, whereas a higher level shield has 25-30% to block rating, giving you more consistent result. In addition to the above, we are also considering adding additional threat to successful block. And so that will be the main difference between avoid and block, so avoid will be more useful for strikers, for example, or healers, as it adds threat reduction, while blocking is really more for tank, as it adds more threats to successful block, which I think is very interesting. In parry, this stat is a bit tricky as it lies somewhere in between a defensive and an offensive stat. Offensive because you get the chance to repost. When a player successfully parries an attack, the incoming attack will suffer a disadvantage along with a fixed damage percentage mitigation, similar to block except it will be independent of weapon. In addition, we will beef up repose to make it a lot more powerful than an additional auto attack. None of this is set in stone yet, as we are still iterating, so we would love to hear your thoughts on those proposed change. There were a number of other design proposals that didn't make the cut, as we found them to be less interesting and or obfuscated too much information happening on the back end. We hope that the above proposed change will give us a decent amount of flexibility for interesting encounter and optimization. Imagine a chaos shield with a 100% block rating. Oh, that will be fun. <clears throat> so guys, we are waiting for your feedback related to this specifically. So please let your thought in that threads related to those proposed change. It is not set in stone and it can still be changed. 
The patch size on going, this is something we have been discussing before, so I'm not going to reread it, but if you want to know more about the change related to the patch size, please check out this thread. And then you have also the list of known issues. Sky Luminate, so what's the biggest part about the patch? So that's definitely the outdoor dungeon. So it is very important to add more and more new content so the max level player can continue their adventure and continue to progress their character uh, without farming green mobs. So the outdoor dungeon is aimed to adds more content to the last zone, which is Retro Ridge, but there's other zone and other dungeon that are being worked on for different levels. So we need to continue the journey up to max level in offering content for players to continue to level their character, while also continuing to polish and add content for the leveling experience. So this is done, uh, you know, in parallel, basically. Quest only give it a not experience. Yes, that's true, Leola. So th th the reason why the quests are not giving experience is because we want the quest to be something optional. You do the quest if you want to do the quest. If you just want to progress your character, you don't need to do the quest. So if your, your thing is to explore the world, farm mobs, going to dungeon, you don't have to pay attention to the quest. This allows us also to make the quest more worldly, with more text, more lore, uh, making them a little bit more mysterious, with puzzle, with enigma, um, with things that you need to put effort on. So as we are not doing very easy quests where you find uh, three uh, NPCs in the city with an uh, exclamation mark above their head and you have a very simple task to do and to complete, uh, we really want those quests to be an adventure for you. And that needs to be something you choose to do. If you don't want to do the quest because you can be asked to read a lot of text, you don't want to solve puzzle, and you don't want to be, you know, forced to explore and, and to run long distance and come back to the city to give back your quest, you know, that kind of things that can happen. Well, you have very little obligatory quests. There's some uh, like you will want to do the one for your Ember Stone because that has some gameplay implication but the other quests that are just there to teach you the game, to give you some lore indication and, and uh, they are relatively simple in the first area so they're not very complex. You have a few steps, you have uh, maybe to gather a group to be able to complete them but they are relatively simple. They are getting more complex in future with very little clues so you need to be attentive to what you're doing uh, if you want to properly follow them. Let's speak about our content creator of the week. Let me introduce you Sir Medieval. If you do not know him, it is a YouTuber specifically specialized into all kind of medieval content because as his name suggests, he's really fond of that. So you will find all kind of high fantasy, low fantasy, RPG or MMORPG on his channel. He's producing plenty of content and he's quite well known. You can see that he has 54,000 subscribers and he's doing all kind of video here. You have Pantheon MMORPG, a lot of Pantheon uh, stuff of course, um, but not only. Um, you have a MMORPG series, Life is Fertile, some shorts, medieval game series, so Pantheon, Rising Survival Sandbox, Corpunks, etc. New World MMO, etc. So it is someone that has a very complete channel and that produces a lot of content. So some of you know him for a long time. I know that some of you are actually following him. And so the good news is that Sir Medieval is starting the game. He started actually a few days ago. He tweeted about it and he did his first live stream on YouTube yesterday. So let's have a little look about that. 
I'm taking a random uh, random place to prove you that I take a random place. I'm just doing like I don't want you to when he's well when he's in the dungeon. Why not? There we go. That's one stamina. <laughs> You know, what, you know what, I'm gonna give you a hot pepper actually. Have fun. Hot peppers. <laughs> what was that? It was a joke in WoW. It was like uh, two leather stamp uh, gloves, and then the guy makes him that noise. Like, yeah. like a sound bite they use forever. Oh yeah, when the guy was all excited about his two stamina gloves. Oh, yeah, God. dude. So here, Sir Medieval is playing with two of his actually, friends. Um, when uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth's brother and I. And oh. I think that he killed him in the movie. When uh, have you seen carriers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's some more in here. Oh, the bears are respawning. Watch out. Yeah, no, we need to kill them. Oh. Oh, they're doing the bear cave. There's a lot of them now. Yeah, I'm gonna get this one. But you can see that Sir Medieval is doing all kind of uh, full group take content that without, uh, without X or we get started with on. just a group of three person. They're a little bit higher level than the intended level. As you can see, the mobs are blue, but uh, still he's doing it, <laughs> which is quite good. Yeah, dude, I've been using like 20% stamina to heal you because you're way tougher than you used to be. All right, so I suggest you to check out that video. I'm giving you a link towards this video if you want to see the stream of Sir Medieval yesterday. There it is. So check this out, guys. So it's really nice when um, some YouTubers decide to play the games and then speak about the game. It's always nice. Isn't a uh, all random one play? <laughs> or NPC Nate. That are also YouTubers speaking about Embers Adrift. All right. Uh, Dreamdin, are you ready for some discussion? Awesome. Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for having me on, Eloa. Of course. It's my pleasure. I'm very happy that you come back to the show. Awesome. Me too. Happy to be here. So we have plenty of things to discuss together, but we're going to focus on two subjects. So we're not because otherwise we can speak for forever. So <laughs> first, we are going to discuss about what was last year and then what are the plans for next year, for this year, for 2023? Awesome. Let's dive in. Yeah. So let's do a little recap of um, what Amber Drift has gone through the last year. It has been quite a year for us. It has been so changing, so evolving. So what's your take about this? Oh, man. 2022 was a whirlwind. Um... It feels like it took forever, but it was also just a flash. Uh, <laughs> so obviously we launched in uh, October. Um, we did a whole lot of hard work in the, the year before that time frame. And then we continued to work hard all the way through the end of the year. We took a little break and now we're back and ready to, to get rocking and rolling. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, we, you know, we launched the game, but then we also had you know, new dungeons come into the game, uh, you know, all, all kinds of new stuff. So, I mean, it was, uh, it was quite the, uh, quite the experience, the Ember Veins, um, the static dungeons and metal lands, all kinds of outdoor dungeons in, uh, now with, with the, uh, the exile freehold coming in the outdoor dungeons in, um, the Ridge, Red Shore Ridge. So I'm really excited to to see people's I know a lot of people aren't quite up to that point yet but um yeah I think uh I, I'm really excited to see what happens with that and then as the quests come in for that and people start doing the quest for that content um how people react to the lore and everything too so I'm very excited yeah, it's, it's crazy to imagine that last year when we were doing this show, we were discussing you and me about Embers Adrift, the game was not even in beta. Uh, there was still an NDA, uh, so we were still developing the game uh, behind the scene, having our test just once a week. And then only it opened up to the weekend as well, but before it was just a Wednesday night. 
<laughs> yeah. we, we didn't have dry food. We didn't have retro for us at that time. Not even Central Vein too. I think we just barely had Central Vein one. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we we did a pretty big overhaul towards the, uh, you know, two or three launches or uh, months towards launch where we got you know the city came in and CV two came in and then we put in the static dungeons and Meadowlands and. Yeah, it's 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 been a very interesting um, balancing act, going from the you know the test phases like you you mentioned before, um, to launch to live product. So yeah, it's been it's been quite a crazy adventure. Yeah, it's true. We we tend to forget very easily from where we come from, but I think it's really interesting to to take a moment to look at that because um, while we we can be like, oh, we need to to polish more. We need to add more content. It's good to see what it was before and how we started. And if I recall very well, last year we there had been so much evolution to just one single year, with so much content that has been added, so much system that has been improved, and so much event that has been organized with the community that were very, very small when we started in the alpha testing. We had a very small community, which kind of grew nicely with the beta testing and the two World Breaker event, and then the launch, obviously. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was quite the transition um, going from, you know, a couple weekly, you know, test sessions to 24 seven um, moderating, you know, is a, is a big thing. and. Definitely getting getting the change from people playing, you know, characters that they knew were going to go away to characters that they were investing, you know, their, you know, free time into and uh, weren't going to be deleting. Um, that was a big change. And just, you know, watching people progress at the different paces was was a big challenge as well. Um, you know, seeing how the stats affect things and and you can see in these patch notes this week we're we're doing some balancing on that, those so things feel a little bit better um for your character as you progress making sure that stats aren't worth feeling worthless and and stuff like that so so yeah we're always listening and we're always trying to uh to build embers adrift into the mmo that you can call home obviously we're not we're not a wild killer but uh we are definitely you know, we're growing and we're building and I think we're on a really good track. I'm really looking forward to 2023. I think we've got um, plenty of great feedback to go off of. We've got, you know, I'm building a whole new roadmap for 2023 right now. So that'll be uh, interesting. Um, that's internal, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you're not going <laughs> to see it. You're not going to see it. But um, we might throw some hints out there on, on Bobby's uh, forum. Thing. but yeah it's uh it's good and the numbers are looking good for our company so you know we're we're feeling good about that and we're just gonna keep on pushing we've got actually some really exciting things planned for january um as many of you guys know one of the things we've struggled with thus far has been marketing and we've got some really good uh, marketing pulse points planned out for the new year um we're gonna be getting some streamers in um kind of tapping into new audiences. We're going to be um, doing some creative marketing strategies and, and everything like that. So I'm really excited for that. I'm excited for, you know, we're, we're pretty much, you know, we, we dialed things in hugely systems wise in approach to launch. And we've had to tweak a few things going forward uh, through the first, you know, three months of launch. It's not even been three months yet, which is crazy. Um, you know, we, we haven't even had a full three months so we're, we're coming on up on three months of live uh when we hit like january 15th so that'll be a cool milestone but i mean just the amount of content we've put in in, in two months has been impressive and i think um we're pretty much you know starting to focus you know instead of like 2080 we're we're moving towards this like fully content-based uh focus so it's going to be really fun to see the game grow, the borders of the map grow, 
um, players grow. So yeah, I'm just uh, I'm really excited. <laughs> Oren w wants us to show the roadmap, <laughs> but uh, I saw you know some of the comments earlier about quests. We definitely are doing a lot more focusing on quests. We do want to get some guild uh, quality of life stuff in there, but you know it's it's either quests or quality of life. So we're gonna hit some quests first. We've got a pretty big backlog um, that need to go in, and then we're gonna move towards the quality of life for guild stuff. So don't don't clamor too much for quality of life, or you'll distract us from the quests. <laughs> Yeah, so um, what is your best memory from 2022? Um, my best memory would probably be launching the game. Because <laughs> <laughs> a long, a long, I also had a, a, like, you know, it was a long time coming. Um, I really loved seeing uh, one of the pieces of lore I wrote, a song that I wrote. Uh, get put into actual music from one of our streamers song boxes you know tooling around in the comments here I see so thank you for that that was a pretty special moment for me personally um, but yeah just overall like launching the game and and seeing people having fun and you know it's it's been a fantastic really gratifying um, experience and yeah it was uh, you know it's not easy running a live product but it's totally worth it seeing everyone have fun and getting all the, the nice comments we're getting from people. Um, it's been really great. And I think the team really needed a little bit of a, you know, a holiday breather. I mean, we're obviously still working, but we weren't quite going a hundred miles an hour like we were before <laughs> the holidays. So it was good. And I feel really grounded now and, and I'm ready to take off running. And I think a lot of the other teammates are really ready to do the same. So, um, yeah so that that was uh for 2022 that was that was how it was for me so yeah for me i will say that i i think what i really enjoyed is to to see the progression the evolution from where we came from up to the end because i really had to adapt myself to every step of the way from our alpha to see this may, maybe also because of my function as the community manager i'm really dependent of the players playing and it's what <laughs> what i feel and what i experience is extremely different uh depending of that but um i really enjoyed to take care of the community when it was the alpha when it was the beta and then when it was the launch, it was a little bit a uh, big wave, a big tsunami in my head first. But uh, <laughs> I finally find my groove and my marking. To, it, it really changed my job overnight. And I was not expecting the change overnight. I was more expecting something, um, I mean, more subtle. But it was just like, boom, from one Turn day to on the, the next. Hose. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah. but it was really cool, and I, I really enjoyed the fact this this evolution, this growth, this change over time, and, and the need of uh, adapting to it, and, and to mm -hmm. always find ideas and creative and things to do to tackle the, the situation differently as the situation changed. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a, a wild ride. I see uh, NPC Nate there is calling for merch. We're working on it. I think oh. I'll have that done by the end of the month. Oh, nice. That, so don't seven. worry. There aren't any devs being taken away from development for that. It's just me working on it. So you don't have to worry about uh, about people not working on game content because we're working on a merch shop. That's just that's my project. <laughs> nice. So we do have several questions going on. Shall we answer uh, one of them? Which is, hello Shadows, how is this game for solo play? So, do you want to answer that one, Dream Dream? Sure. Even yeah, if, sure. If, if our dear community has been answering very nicely to this question already. Yeah, um, and Oren brings up a, a good point. We will be having a free weekend soon. I'm not at liberty to announce the date yet, but uh, we uh, will be doing that soon. So if you want to check it out, um, you can certainly wait for that. 
Um, also, another announcement before I answer the question is we are extending the uh, early act, the early adopter bonus to the subscription for $9.99. You can lock it in still until the 15th of the month. So we're gonna we're gonna extend that just because we want to make sure that um, all the players, because our our subscriptions kind of started on the 15th of the month, and it's a good round three months for us of launch. And uh, we thought it'd be a, a fun little treat for all the early adopters kind of coming in in the first three months instead of two and a half months. So you guys can uh, look forward to, you know, if you're you're still kind of, you know, thinking about coming in, you still have some time to uh, get that $9.99 subscription price locked in. Um, but once we do hit the 15th, it will be over. So we'll go up to normal MMO pricing at $14.99. On the 15th so so yeah but anyway as far as um yeah you're welcome yeah um as far as solo play goes that's a lot of what i do right now because i'm you know super busy so what it, when i get to come into the game it's pretty much solo for me um i do on occasion i i, I there's there's a LAN party that I'm involved with and uh, we've got our own guild going. And so on occasion I get to jump in and, and you know, group with those guys about twice a week. Um, although the holidays, you know, I kind of didn't join and I, I don't know if they kept playing or whatever, but I took some time off and I, I just kind of spent it with family. And for those of you who don't know, I've got four kids, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a nice Christmas and nice New Year's. And so we're, uh, yeah. But anyway, for solo play, I enjoy it. Uh, I, I still feel like I can get some stuff done um, while I'm soloing. I can still gather crafting materials and I can I can make those, uh, you know, imbued recipes from any of the stuff that you can make, you know, from solo play. You can get all that stuff with group play or solo play so it's not necessarily like you're only gonna get good gear if you uh group up now there is a case to be made that when you're grouping you have better chance at killing rares obviously and going into the deep dungeons there are more rares down there um, but as far as like solid good gear goes imbued items are good gear it's not like top top tier but you know you can still solo and gather stuff to make that imbued gear and then, um, yeah, then you can can move on, um, you know, while you're waiting for a group or, or whatever. So there are a lot of quest objectives that are soloable as well. So if you are doing a quest, you can accomplish certain things. When a quest calls you to go into, let's say, like an exile fort or a dungeon, you do need to gather a group for those objectives. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my take on soloing. I enjoy soloing, um, especially if I only have, like, a little bit to play like 20 minutes half hour um i'll just jump in and and knock out a few quest objectives and uh you know i know i wrote a lot of the lore but i love talking to the npcs <laughs> yeah it's just... I, I know all the inside jokes and all this the stuff so like when i read them it's it's pretty fun but anyway yeah of course yeah. and and then crafting and gathering is a very nice um uh, activity to do when you're soloing, because when you're in a group and you're stopping by every flowers to pick them up, it might be a little bit annoying for your group. Um, so it, it is an activity that shines specifically when you're by yourself. Um, but it, it's also important to realize, do you like soloing or not? Our game is still created first and foremost to encourage players to group up together with a small group or with a full group, but the game is made to encourage you to team up with other players. So if you are someone that only want to solo and you don't want to play the game, I cannot promise you you will have fun. You will have to find that out by yourself. This is not something we can estimate for you in your stead. So that will be really up to certain days person that really likes to solo in Embers or Drift and they enjoy to, to do that and they don't group up and they have fun. But that's really a personal question. So when we had been discussing a, a little bit about the future 
in 2023. So you have been speaking that we have a marketing plan coming in, uh, that we will have an open weekend. And so we're very excited about that. And new content is going to be added to the game. But is there anything else you can speak about the, the new year, the upcoming year without revealing too much? Well, with the, with the new year, you know, the goal is really to get the game to mature. We have uh, a big goal internally to make sure we get that last 10 levels of content put in. Um, so reaching level 50 is much easier <laughs> than it is right now. There are uh, mobs that you can get to level 50 on right now coming in um, with this new dungeon, but I don't think anyone wants to grind one uh outdoor dungeon all the way to 50. so we are working on another zone we're working on another few dungeons uh, my goal is is really you know the first 20 levels feel pretty fleshed out with quests and content and people are having fun but like people have been mentioning there's quests missing from dryfoot there's quests missing from red shore and the ridge and we've got a big storyline quest culminating in the um in the exile freehold which i'm really excited for uh that's still being worked on right now um, but i think as you know the main wave of people get up to that level that quest will be in um yeah i'm really looking forward to just watching the content expand and 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 watching uh you know people have more options of where to go at certain levels and you know some you know we're we're hearing um, that people are kind of frustrated with the itemization, but I think as we get more quests out there and some of this content that's spread out, people have more options. And uh, obviously we're going to be, you know, taking a hard look at the feedback and seeing if we need to adjust anything um, as far as like technically what we're doing with, with the rares and, and that kind of stuff too. But I mean, all in all, it, this is our year to really mature the product and mature the player base and and really see everything kind of expand um i'm really looking forward to kind of get into the end of 2023 and looking back at how much um has been added and and uh you know how the community has developed and everything like that yeah i 2023 i think is going to be a really fun year so buckle up because uh We've got we've got a lot of cool stuff coming. I see grizzled peaks in the, in our future. I see you know the Grimstone Canyon in our future. Some dungeons for Dryfoot and for Red Shore. Um, some really cool new lore coming in. Uh, right now we've got a quest that has to do with the Eye of Abax. The uh, you know the Blupiter. Yeah, the the so-called Blupiter. Um, <laughs> the person who discovered the Eye. Um, some cool information about the Eye of Abax and, and why it's kind of a cool thing for these people in New Haven and in the North. And I, yeah, I'm really looking forward, <laughs> forward to seeing people speculate more on the others. Uh, we've got some cool story plans for the others coming up. So um, once we get this main storyline quest done for the Exile Freehold, we're going to be shifting over to them and uh, just more of the lore of the old people who lived here before. So what what are the runes? You're going to find out a little bit, at least about some of them. Um, you're going to see new ones coming in, so that'll be fun. That's really cool. So um, let's speak a little bit about the Exile Freehold, as is the new content for Dispatch. Sounds good, yeah. What do you want to know? Back. So I personally really like the outdoor dungeon because I I enjoy, of course, to go underground and I think that our dungeons are really exciting, but I still prefer to be above ground, see the sunlight or the change of the weather and the trees and the nature. So I have a little preference for uh, overworld dungeon. I, I see it a lot in the stream. So I like when there's an open dungeon, which is difficult content that you have to do in a group, but it's outside. Yeah, I I really enjoy Redshore in general, just because it's like so beautiful. And I feel like the difference between night and day in that zone is really cool too. Like it just feels 
Like it's got its own vibe going on. I love running around red shore at night and during the day, but they they feel different to me. Um, so yeah, I do I do enjoy the outdoor dungeons. However, I do feel that you know red shore and dry foot are kind of missing something that the zones with the central veins and the ember veins um, have. Um, there's more challenge underground for groups than there is for overworld because you can always just run in the overworld right <laughs> like you, you're always that's true you know, relatively safe you can you can run away uh, but in a dungeon you're kind of forced to deal with gritty situations so um, i'm really looking forward to those dungeons coming in i feel like the uh you know as people get into red shore they're not challenged as much so I think it's going to be good to uh, to get those dungeons in and have that that feeling of like, OK, you know, we've geared up from the overworld. Let's dive into this dungeon and see if we can handle it. Um, so, yeah. And the uh, Red Shore dungeon that it's planned just to to make everyone hyped here. It's quite <laughs> different from the Ember Vein, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not the same system. We built this dungeon with a different system, so you won't see the same cave walls and stuff like that. It's going to be um, well. It's been a while since I've been in it, but uh, it's got its own set of runes and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you'll you'll see, you'll see. It's much more structured. There's much more architecture in it, and uh, it's got its own sort of vibe going on. <laughs> So I'm really excited, excited for that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it will be cool. Uh, and will now we... for something totally different. <laughs> will we also have some ember drift in Red Shore? Yeah, there's going to be red. Um, there's going to be ember drifts everywhere. So we'll we'll always and those ember drifts, you know, they're shorter, but they're more challenging. You know, they're tight, more tightly packed. You've got the chance of things turning into ashen variants in there and uh so yeah they're they're gonna be there to, to, to really give a heavy amount of challenge to groups and um they're gonna be all over so you can expect more ember veins coming in as well that's so cool i really like the ember vein there i find it very enjoyable to do and there's yeah. always pretty nice adventure that happened into them yeah. and some nice rare and some good loot Yes, yes. Yeah, I think as the zones fill out with quests and dungeons, um, the itemization will feel better. Obviously, we got to take a look at that stuff and see if we need to make changes. So, yeah. Well, that's all good news. So, thank you very much for yeah. speaking with me today and it was a chat. So, that's great. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the fun stuff we're going to do in January as well. And the rest of the year obviously yeah yeah i'm really excited for it so here we go strap in it's gonna be a fun crazy ride <laughs> yeah thank you so very much for joining today thanks guys thanks eloa thanks chat happy new year and uh let's go let's go take care of this game <laughs> yes bye bye all right bye bye go all right we're going to walk around the new dungeon. Welcome to Exile Freehold. As you can see, we have plenty of nice exile over here. Look at this, this is beautiful. That's a nice screenshot. Grizzle Peak is not just the top of a mountain, it's um, it's more like Switzerland. So you, you will have valley as well. You have a lot of valley actually in Grizzle Peak. So you can really imagine, imagine it like a Switzerland las landscape. It looks very much like that. Or the east of France. 
So you can see that this dungeon is pretty big. You also have some material. Someone was asking earlier if there was some uh, material. I would ne never be able to gather that, obviously. So it's level 40, so it's confirmed. Oh, there, there is no, there is nothing as such as that. We're a small community, but there is still um, plenty of everything. So you really pick up what you want. I don't think there is so much of an overabundance of one role over another. Well, maybe the highest level can tell me more about this. Because I'm not a high level person, so I I do not experience that type of gameplay. But at lower level you have everything. You have defender, you have striker, you have supporter in abundance. Related to your population size, of course. Yeah, it is weird because I feel that at the moment that my my um, duelist is more wish than my brigand when I play. But that might just be me or so. LFG system, that depends what you mean. So of course there is not a dungeon finder. That's an abomination. This is something that completely destroyed the feel of community. But you do have a LFG system like this where you can announce your group. Like here, Vangu is finding a group for level 11 to 15. So if I wanted to find a group, I could do like this and then I put myself. I can add some tags. For example, I want to do a dungeon. I want to do a dungeon in Red Shore. And then you will, you will see the tag. So that's the LFG system that you have. Of course, you can use the global channel for looking for group as well. And you have a LFG channel on Discord to organize your group in advance. But we do not have a matchmaking system. Uh, we don't want that in this game. It is very much a game about making friends, building a community where people talk to each other, where people get to know each other, and where you create meaningful bonds with other players. So friendship are being built, um, all that kind of thing, and I do believe that a dungeon finder system, like a matchmaking system, uh, has helped to destroy the sense of community over the years among every MMORPG. That's one of my biggest grief I have against Blizzard when they implemented that in World of Warcraft back in 2010 uh, in one of the last patch of Wrath of the Lich King. I saw the community changing overnight. For the worst. And then it impacted the whole industry. Horrible. But we are going against most of what's current in the industry, right? We are really trying to rebuild a game which go back to the root of the genre that give you the same kind of feeling and experience. Uh, there's a reason why we are a niche MMORPG. Um, we're not going to implement the most popular systems and we are going to stubbornly um, trying to implement our vision as best as possible which is to create an immersive world with a meaningful, slow-paced progression, a tactical combat, and a group-based gameplay, where you need to team up with other players, where it takes time 
an effort to accomplish anything in the game where you have to work your wits your courage well your courage so to speak but your character has to be courageous because it will face many challenges and that's how you build meaningful memories So that will be the exit of the dungeon. Here's a numbering. A respawn point. I really love this music. And then you can observe the world. Yeah, that's a good point, Oran. There, every game is shining for different things. And it's good when that happens. Not every game has to fit everyone. Or every mood, because you can want to play several games for different reasons. So what do you think of this dungeon so far? I'm kind of spoiling you everything right now. So now you can imagine fighting over here. I think it can easily host uh, three to four groups. Easily roaming about here they're rebuilding the ruins Look, you can even climb the ladders to have a very beautiful view. Look at this. Isn't it nice? Yeah, exactly. A good place for the screenshot. Remember that the mobs can follow you on ladders, right? But I like this little touch where you can just... I know it's, it's, it's just a detail, but it adds so much to the exploration feel of the game. Can we clean that one? Yeah, we can clean that one too. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, a nice outdoor dungeon. Pretty different from the other dungeon that we have already. When it comes to the exile fort or the spider cave, it's pretty different, right? Maybe it looks a little bit like the stronghold. But the nature around is very different. And this one looks very mysterious as well. Oh, someone fighting. What's that? Oh, it's Nautilus. <laughs> It's not Nautilus, but they are there. Where is Nautilus? Nautilus is over there. Okay, they are fine already. Oh my god. I'm going to say hi. Look at this, we can assist directly at the first group cleaning up this dungeon, guys. Isn't that cool? Nautilus, Quadzel, and Gordrak. And Strike. Yeah. Look at this, I think Nautilus is the highest level, it's 43. Forty one, Gordrak forty one. Where's the number four? Spawning a boss kills them all. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> like they are having fun. This is cool. And and what's funny is they're all dressed in dark blue. That's the the color of level forty or what? <laughs> Alright, so guys, this is it. No, no, no. No, it's not one person. Because I know them for a long time. They're a different person. <laughs> They're not the same. And there it is. I think we are going to end our little exploration over here. Is it the door out? Let me see. No, it's not the door out. It could have been a door out, but no. But that's anyway where we are going to end our little exploration of the new dungeon. Facing the beautiful mountain of Grizzle Peaks. Exile Freehold, the newest overworld dungeon. I hope you guys enjoyed. 
And it's time to say goodbye. So are you ready to say goodbye to YouTube? Let's go. And voilà, that's it for today. Thank you so very much, everyone, for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was an interesting discussion and information for you. And that you're looking forward 2023 with us this year. Yes. Um, thank you very much for watching the video. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved one. And I will see you next time. Do not forget to check out our event on Discord. Join us on Discord if you have not done already. Follow us on Twitter. Follow this channel if you have not done it already as well. And if you want to see the show live, you can meet me on Twitch TV the Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Europe time or 11 a.m. Central American time. See you soon. Bye.